45 minutes, start the clock, because I will talk about this stuff forever. So you, um, first of all, I just want to say thanks for having me here again to the Moz crew. Um, all right, so yeah, I just want to talk about the things that real companies do. I want to give you guys tons of examples of things that I've gone through. Um, I love to give you guys as real of examples as I can give, so there's not going to be a whole lot of hypotheticals here. I want to talk to you about real things. Um, I also will end up talking to you guys a little bit about um, someone in this room who uh, tried to sue one of my clients while I was trying to do link building for them. So let's rock. So I want to warn you already. How many of you guys have seen me present somewhere before, or seen me on YouTube or something? OK, that, thank you. Um, I love that shit, right? Um, I appreciate all the love. You guys are awesome. But um, very often when you look at my presentations, they're very tactical, right? So I'm hitting stuff really fast, which I will do here, because I'm only through two out of about 114 slides. Um, but it's very tactical. And I got sick of being in marketing meetings and watching people spend like $15 million on an outdoor campaign and me not getting one piece of freaking decent content. So that's part of what I want to tackle today. So it's, this, this presentation will not be about things you can scale. It won't be about like, hey, here's how to do one thing and then do it like over and over and over again. Like nobody wants to do that guy over and over and over again, right? <laughs> so this starts with um, an inspiration that came from Mike King, right? And like one day Mike King was like, you guys are going into companies talking about link juice? And you're wondering why you're not getting a real budget? Like, ooh, you know, the, the link juice is going to pass through the page authority of 65. Like, stop that, right? So, it, so since Mike's a big fan of the Sixers, and this is Allen Iverson, if you guys all remember practice, we're not talking about the game. We're talking about practice, man. Like that quote, look it up on YouTube, Allen Iverson practice. But it's like, this is what we're doing, right? Like Mike saw the industry in a different way. And he's like, you SEO people are going and talking about link juice? Not like revenue. Things that people actually pay their bills in. How many people have paid their bills in link juice? <laughs> so why the freak are we constantly talking about it? Stop it. We don't talk about revenue, man. Share a voice. So let me take you to the land before time. You guys in this room realize that businesses sold things before search engines existed, right? You remember this. There was a whole thing called business well before Alta Vista like 96 or 86. Two of the guys in this picture aren't even here anymore. It's freaking sad. So I want to take you back to that time. The clicker's a little bit off. So I want you to think, how would you sell a software product if you couldn't build a bunch of link juice? How would you sell it? How would you sell software? If somebody gave you a $500 budget and asked you to help them sell their software, how would you sell the first or Jordan? Link juice doesn't exist. It's 1986, you're listening to It's Tricky like crazy on a boombox this big. <laughs> what if you had to sell this thing? And you had 500 bucks and you couldn't use this publication. Remember Amika Shopper? Computer Shopper, like when you would wait for it because it was like this thick. Anybody remember those days? I do. I'm an old school nerd. So you got to think, like how did people market this stuff? They did real company shit. <laughs> Very often SEOs do fake company shit. And let's bridge that so we can get the budgets that we deserve and stop begging. So I figured I would end up saying shit a lot in this conversation or this presentation if I didn't just use a hashtag. So like, let's just use RCS as the abbreviation because my mother will watch this. <laughs> and she will be like, couldn't you just tone it down with the shit? So don't get me in trouble with my mom. So before, like I said, before this existed, how would you have actually marketed a product, right? So I want you guys to think a little bit. Think about our industry. These are our tactics. This is why we're not going to talk about tactics today. OK, let's buy some, 301, some old domains and 301 them. Yeah, that's real company shit. Stuff, RCS. We're going to buy text links and footers, RCS. 10,000 Pinterest accounts that are all interlinked, 109 bucks, buy them, RCS, come on. This is what we've been doing for the last, I've been doing SEO every day of my life for the last 13 years, and I'm one of those people that doesn't know how to code. So I'm sorry to disappoint you, like everybody should learn to code people, I'm not one of you, but bring it, let's try it, right? <laughs> so we're, gonna, we're, we're buying text links and copy that doesn't sell anything. Like that's what we've been doing, three-way link exchanges? 
This is what we've been doing, link bait, cloaking. I cloaked in the beginning. I didn't even know it was a bad thing until I found out the hard way. Private link networks. This is what we've been doing, guys. And we wonder why we're not getting the respect that we deserve. Because all this sounds like fake company stuff. How are you going to get a real budget when you're talking about fake Pinterest accounts? And we're not adding any value. We're not. Those things don't get conversions. So is that what we are? Is that what this room is full of? Well, not today, but come on. Some of you are still struggling to, get, to let go of the crack. You saw what happened to Pookie in New Jack City. It's not beautiful. <laughs> so like, let's stop this, right? Profile links, do follow. Anybody ever say the word do follow in here in the next three days? I'm probably going to want to hunt you down and smack you. <laughs> do follow? Seriously, we're going to talk about do follows? Practice? Page rank seven, like who cares, right? PR seven, buy them. We have a software to get you do follow links, SEO profile links, automated three-way link exchanges, awesome, awesome. Don't you just feel the awesome in that? But why are we still doing it, right? Cut that crap out. My favorite thing is not this one, but this one. So if you wanna buy 500 Facebook likes, it's 20 bucks, but if you want them to be US, $24. <laughs> Stop keeping these guys in business if you're in this room. Do RCS. So let's keep moving along. You guys have seen enough. And you guys know, RCS is tough. It's not easy. People have been showing you tactics and things all day. So we already know that. But I'm gonna start with a true story that happened in my own company that pissed me off when I heard about it. So we have a client in the construction business. And somebody came to me and said, hey, you know, my idea is I wanna to talk to these mommy bloggers and I want to give them something, some construction materials for their kids and get links. Really? Yeah, I mean, it'll get links. But like, how am I going to go into my client and not get laughed out of their office when I say that crap? This is the challenge that we are all faced with. You can still do the same thing, but make it RCS. How about this? Our company wants to inspire, we want to help our client inspire the next generation of engineers. I can get a lot of companies behind that. That's how they think. That's how they decide to give you real budgets. I didn't say, I'm going to get a bunch of mommy bloggers to link to you and I'm going to give out a bunch of stuff. Come on, stop that, right? I saw that and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to vomit. This is easier. Companies want to do this. They want to aspire to something. And what I also love is that real company stuff gets you links that the other guys can't. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Type in polo shirt. I love these results. I'm not really a polo shirt fan guy, but I love these results because they're all big brands there. And look at some of the companies that are, that are there. Every one of them. Ralph Lauren has a freaking hospital. Who knew, right? Nordstrom has a whole program where they encourage giving and grants, and the same for Macy's. And they talk about all the things that their companies believe in or do. How many people in here that are doing SEO would love to work with companies that actually had stuff like this? I know I do, and that's why I'm getting rid of the clients who don't. I am, because it's making my job too hard when people don't believe investing in any marketing except for SEO. If you have a client in here, or you are a client, and 90% of your budget is SEO, a lot of people in this room don't want to work with you anymore if they can get rid of you. Because you should be doing something else. You should aspire to be something better than just somebody who's got a bunch of do-follow links this week. If that's in your report, fire your agency. Because this is real company shit is what it is. It is. And I'm loving it when I have clients who are doing this stuff because it makes my job so much more fulfilling. Like I go home and I feel proud about the work I've done when I don't, feel, when I don't build do follow blog links or go to some directory that lists them out by, oh, here's the page rank 10 and page rank eight and page rank nine. Yeah, mom, I'm really proud of you. Really proud of your son. He knows how to go into a list of page rank seven blogs and put links on their sites. I think we're so much bigger than that. And it's about time we take advantage and take, like I said, take the budgets that we deserve, right? So I'm gonna give you an example of something that we did for a fashion client. Anybody in here in the fashion space that's the manufacturer of clothes, this works really, really well. Patty talked about it before. So we have a client in the fashion space, and this is Allie Brown, it's somebody I work with. And what we did for our client in the fashion space is we took images from their catalog, dropped it in a Google reverse image search, found everybody who copied 
the image and put it up on their site. Simple, right? This client sends models like all over the world to take pictures and do photo shoots. But then how we turn this into RCS, we didn't just go, hey, you copied our, our image, give us a link. What we did is we said, hey, we're doing a roundup every week of all the people who are mentioning our models in X, Y, and Z way. And we want to include you in that roundup and send it out to our Twitter followers. And when it's a company like The Gap, it's not The Gap, but when it's a company like that and they have 155,000 followers, there's a whole lot of bloggers who want to get in front of 155,000 people who follow The Gap. So why don't you turn the things you're doing into things like this? Now, yes, it requires you to talk to the social person who's always siloed away from the SEO person and they don't like each other, but that's our job. Let's bridge those gaps and let's make our jobs somewhat, somewhat easier. I think SEOs are going to have to come up with marketing plans for once. And I don't mean five page rank five links this week, I'm going to get 15 next month, and then I'm going to sprinkle in some comments, and then I'm going to sprinkle in some, no, I mean like a real marketing plan, you know, the ones you did in college, like the four Ps or whatever that crap was. <laughs> and if you're thinking, well, I don't like the fact that Google's favoring brands for the word polo shirt, I'm going to go, well, those are the places that most of us buy polo shirts, homeboy. So don't cry about Google favoring brands. It's one of the things I like about this audience is the crying over Google favoring brands doesn't happen here a whole lot. Um, and I'm just glad that Google's finally rewarding brand activity. It's like Rand mentioned earlier today. I, I, I felt bad going into clients and being like, yeah, you're doing all this, this RCS, but it's actually not helping you to rank well. Like that felt like kind of dirty, right? So I love Panda. I love Penguin. They're like my friends. Like I would sleep with them in the bed at night if I could. Because they made a lot of people who weren't investing in RCS finally go, ooh, we might want to actually do that. So anybody in here who's been trying to get real content marketing done, real SEO done, now's the time. Now's the time to go, oh yeah, you know that warning that you got, remember? A year, and just start firing off the old forwards from like a year ago when you came here and said, remember when I came back from MozCon and I asked for this and you didn't give it to me because you, you wanted to spend $20 per article? We might want to do this. So people for ages were getting away with no followers, no engagement, no customer service, no content, nothing, and they were winning, and it sucked. And then it all changed, right? And I feel like, I felt like this is how like, the VPs of marketing looked at us, right? Like, are you serious? You're gonna be able to create, I'm gonna get revenue from this? What you talking about, Willis? Or we came up with all of our crazy, like, you know, buzzwords. And like, people just looked at us when we walked in a room. Like, I've been walking in at rooms talking about SEO since 99, and people looked at me like this. Because I was talking to them about directory links and do follow blogs and three way link exchanges. That was like, you know, in the early 2000s, but still. So, this is what happened to all you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna get some do follow links. Smack! I'm gonna get some page rank six smack! I'm gonna do some comments, Mac. I love this. I absolutely love it. And I love every single tack that I've just talked about happening over and over again. I love this. Because I always wanted to be a real marketer. I didn't go to college to be a do-follow finder. And I didn't stay in college very long, but I didn't go to college to be a do-follow blog finder. Did you? Thank you, right? Like, but how do we allow ourselves to become that? One more, boom. It's awesome. And now we're cleaning up low quality links with tools, right? Read the headline. Save days of work with smart automation and tracking. Isn't this how we got bad links in the first place, guys? Trying to save time with automation and not do RCS? So let's use a tool that advertises itself to help us not have to work, which is how we got into this whole thing in the first place. Seriously, removing links. I'd rather somebody develop a clean up your crappy business tool. <laughs> somebody wanna help me with that? I got a lot of ideas for you. I just can't program, remember? I barely know HTML. But seriously, like, put in this. What's your marketing budget? 100% of my budget's gonna be SEO. Crappy business tool says. <laughs> All right. But a lot of people still aren't getting it, right? And it's, ah, it's, it's, it's sad. I hate this freaking clicker. I, have, I, I roll with my own clicker because I'm so picky about the clicker timing. 
Um, but you know what? I want to talk about what we aspire. You know what's great? Let's talk about what we want out of our clients for once, right? Not like, oh, please, can you please give me a little bit of money so I can buy you some links and then, you know, screw that. Let's talk about what we want. The clients that we want. I want this client. Not only because their planes are awesome and they now fly to Philly to Seattle direct, um, or no, they fly to San Fran direct, and then I can hop up here. This is, send us five travel pics of you traveling when you use our airline. I can build links on that, right? I can't build links on the person who goes, hey, how about you get me 50 articles written for $20 each? Or what about people who have rabid fans? And I'm going to read back to you because I want you to hear every freaking word of what I'm going to show you. Lousy service from Revzilla, awesome service. Before lunch on Tuesday the 12th, I called Revzilla and ordered a riding suit. This afternoon, I received an email saying that the suit had shipped. On Wednesday the 13th, after lunch, the package was delivered to my door. This is terrible. Terrible. I had to wait almost 27 hours for my gear. They should try to do better, maybe dropping it from a helicopter. <laughs> Sarcasm doesn't read so well online. And then let's, let's look at what the freaking fallout of this was. Look at this. Yeah, I pretty much had the same experience. Bought a helmet, didn't like it, sent it back. It arrived back there yesterday, and they sent me my money back the same day. What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't even get to call customer service to find out when I would get my money back. They took all the fun out of the transaction. <laughs> and we laugh. But when I show you big brands, not a lot of people have heard of Revzilla, have you? But their fans freaking love them. Read it. And if you're on the road, 800 miles from a three-day speaking engagement on a forecast suddenly takes an unexpected, nasty, cold, and wet turn, they will have the audacity to overnight you a pair of wintertime gloves to your motel. How can they face themselves in the mirror? <laughs> and last but not least, I agree with everyone here. I had the same experience. Last spring, they had the nerve to draw my name from one of their monthly free gear giveaways and overnighted a full Olympia suit to me so I'd have to break it in on a trip to Moab that same week. And to add insult to injury, they offered to send me two to make sure the suit fit. Evil elves they are, giving me $900 of riding gear. That's a company that does RCS, right? And that's what we want. I want a company who has rabid freaking clients who love them. Why? Because then I'm not trying to convince people that they're not douchebags. I'm not trying to convince people that they actually care about their customer. Because a company that only looks at everything as a margin they're not sending two suits because they're going to go, well, why would we do that? Because if we send two suits, then we're going to have to pay twice the shipping. Yeah, I don't want that client anymore. And hopefully none of you will have to deal with those clients anymore. I want the client who goes, yeah, we're going to send two suits because we want to make sure it fits for that person. I can work with that person. Why? Because they got people who are rabid fans. Or here's an example. I love the way JCPenney kind of stood up and said, oh, so we're being boycotted against because of our ad with the two fathers? Our Father's Day ad's gonna be two fathers. I like a company that stands for something. This is the type of company I wanna work with, right? I can work with that. And people in this room can work with that. It's the companies who don't believe in that that are almost impossible to work with. Or companies that share their expertise. Self-plug, every two weeks we sit on Google Plus and we just try to answer as many people's questions as we possibly can on PPC or SEO. And there's like 50 of us at SEER and we just sit around a room and then we just try our best to answer as many of your questions as possible. People who share their data. You know, how many of you in here have clients who have tons of data that they're sitting on that you know is extremely interesting? That they're like, but if we gave all that out, people would uh, know our stuff. Like, yeah, well then I can't build you any links. Because you're so tight with all the things that you own that you're not willing to give anything. And I like clients who are willing to give freely because I can build links off of that. What's interesting is that when you use this tool from GrooveShark, I can drop in Eminem and find out all kind of information on people who typically listen to Eminem. I can build, how many people here are looking at this and going, I don't think I could build any links off of a data source like this? Because this is the wrong conference. I hear there's some other tech-ready conference or something you should probably go to, you're in the wrong room. But how many people want clients that are doing things like this? And I want to help you guys to convince your clients to do things like this. I got some examples for you, so don't you worry. Who knew? Like, they can even look at like, what their mobile carrier is most likely to be. Who knew, right? Or even Lending Club. They're sharing all the data on, all, on the performance of all their loans. Transparency. Transparency builds links. How many of you guys in here read my blog post when we got banned by Google? How many of you read that? Right. 
Yes, we got banned by Google for six hours, but because we do real company shit, I wrote back to Matt Cutts and said, you guys are linking to us from Google.com. And so is Microsoft, and so is Rackspace, and all these other companies. So I think there might be something wrong with the algorithms. <laughs> right? Companies, but see, this is where we can't be hypocritical, right? Your company gets hit, I just went out there with it. Yeah, we got hit, but we do RCS, so there's gotta be something up with your stuff, not mine, right? When you're not doing RCS, you're like, oh my God, was it those, was that that link network that I got into? Oh shit, man, now we're fucked. <laughs> like, the minute we got hit, I went, that's y'all. Practice, I've been doing this stuff. I've been talking about this stuff for years. I've been trying to do it. And, I, and, we, and, and we've done it so well that you guys decided to link to us. So how is it that we did something wrong here? Oh, I wish I could give more details on that. trying to keep my friends in high places happy with me. So, but no, like, think about it. I'm not, if you really are worried about Penguin or Panda, and you might need to be, just start doing RCS. Because then when you get hit and you decide to file your reconsideration request or whatever, you can point to things that are actually valuable. The hard part is when you go, well, if we remove all those links, how are we gonna rank well again? Right, buddy. You didn't do anything before, consider it a bonus for the last six years that you've been getting away with this crap. So I did a whole presentation on real company shit um, back when, uh, when Moz came to Philly. Uh, so that's the link to the video because I can't get into a lot of the stuff here. So there are some like oldies but goodies that I've talked about, and this is where I'll start getting more into tactics. But these are things I had to make sure you guys saw, even though some of you have seen them already, because the crap works. So it's not new, I'm sorry. Um, Take your followers out of follower wonk. Pull them down in Excel and find out what writers or editors or journalists are already following you. It's the easiest way to find quality link opportunities. Easiest. Why would a journalist follow you? Why would an editor follow you? Why would they follow your corporate account? When you do this, if you have been doing real company stuff, guess what happens? You take all your followers, you drop them into Excel like this, and you just type in the word writer. And then guess what it does? You saw Annie show all that stuff? It highlights all the people with the word writer in their bio. And sometimes they write at real companies. Shocking. Here's the outcome. Who here wouldn't want a link from ZDNet? Keep your hands down. Right. This person's following our account. You know how easy it is to reach out to that person and start to establish a relationship when you do that? Or someone else that writes for ad tech? That's great. Like These people are already following us. So they're saying, we see value in what you do. This is why we gotta stop trying to find shortcuts because there's stuff sitting under your nose that you're not even looking for because you're so busy trying to figure out the Panda algorithm update. Stop it. Go help some people out somewhere, gain more followers. So then what you also wanna do when you do this, if you've been doing RCS, you will have followers like this already. If you go, I don't have any followers yet. Well, you should've been doing some RCS. Read Write Web. Dropped RWW into our followers and found somebody that follows us that writes for Read Write Web. I did the same thing for Huffington Post. I did the same thing for TechCrunch, no one yet. But I started finding writers at these popular publications who already see value in what we do, and we're not even following them back, so I changed that first, right? But this is how you can build quality links, but it starts with giving somebody a compelling reason to follow you on social. And if you don't have any followers yet, follow a competitor. Take the competitor that you want to be like the one that does the RCS, and go into your boss and say, well, hey, you know how hard it is for us to get links now? Do you see how easy it is for them to get links? Because here they are, here's all the people that follow them that write for some of the biggest publications we want to be in. But because we're not sharing, because we're not transparent, because we're not adding value, they got no reason to follow us. Can I send out a couple tweets a week? Can you start to actually share some of your expertise online? Because that will build you the followers that then makes getting the links so much easier. So I had, a, I had a challenge from a client, and this client says, we're giving you nothing new for links. Anybody ever have a client that wants to work with you and signs you on, and then goes, but I'm not doing anything new. Anybody got those clients? They could, yeah, that's, that's most of this freaking room, let's be honest, right? So I like challenges though, right? So I said, all right, let's see what we can do. Because I knew this would push me into new places I had never gone, but this company does RCS. So let me show you the first thing that we did. So Adam Melson, who works with us, what he did is he did a reverse image search on their logo and put in the word sponsorship. 
and I'm going to use an, an example of a competitor of theirs. See how many of these are showing up? Tons. When companies do RCS, you just got to sit there and find the stuff they're already doing and piggyback, and piggyback on it. But because the client put the challenge out that they were going to give us nothing new to build links, we had to think of new ways to build links that we had never thought of before. And this is one of the things that came out of it. So I would recommend that you do the same. Company name plus event. Find the events that your, that your clients are doing. Because you know how often we get shut out of the marketing meetings, guys, because we're so busy talking about do follows, they don't want us there anymore? So we're not invited in to find out that they're throwing events. We had a client giving away a trip to Spain. Spain, cool place to be. 12 entrants in 13 weeks. They were doing it on Facebook. Um, and we found out too late to really help them. I don't have time to go through all the event, the ways I would build links on events, but I don't need to. Ah, but before I do, we sponsored a blood drive that I missed on Monday. I was really pissed about that, so I missed a blood drive for you guys. Um, we sponsored a, a blood drive in our office to try to help out people in the community. And I'm saying don't even think about it because about 70% of the room went, can I get a link from the Red Cross if I sponsor a Stop that. <laughs> it's the freaking Red Cross. I didn't do this for a link, and I didn't get one yet. <laughs> we did it because we, we, we actually we have a culture, and we care about helping other people, and our company believes in that. So this was one of my employees' ideas who was on the PPC team, so he really doesn't care about links. So Kane Jameson, wherever he is, he's here. He did such a monster post on how to build links from events that if you haven't read it, read it. Because I can't even go through it all in my, in my slide. So just follow his ass and read this. And if you're doing events, you will get so much more value out of them. Damn, all right, I gotta start hustling through these because I'm getting low on time. So I wanna give you guys the 30 second real company shit test. Are you ready? So if you gotta figure out is my client or my company doing some RCS? I want to show you how to do it. So what you do is you use your, your, your neighborhood friendly SEO Moz tool and you click on top pages. And then you kind of want to see the fall off from the home page to page 50 on how many external, how many links they're getting, how many linking root domains they're getting. Here I'm looking at Marketo. Look at the fall off. Their home page has 1400. By the time I get to the 50th result, I'm down to 14 links. Now let's see how that compares to some of their competitors. 620 to five. Who do you think is ranking higher? Trick question, you know what's up, right? So go do this. I don't need you to look at the numbers, don't start reverse engineering how people are getting their links, just click, look at yourself, look at how many links come to your homepage, scroll all the way to the bottom and see how quickly that falls off to nothing. And then do it to your competitors. And if you see that, that you're down at number 25 and 50 and they're still getting links in the teens or single digits and you're down to zero, that's a problem. Here's another example. Where do you think these guys rank compared to the first two examples? Right, because when you're building high quality content, people naturally are linking to it. They almost can't help themselves because it's so good. They keep linking to it. And for the word, I think it's, uh, uh, it's not inbound marketing, I think it's lead generation. This is how the rankings actually play out. Pardo, uh, they're on like page two. So think about how quick your fall off is. You guys can all do that right now. So if you don't like anything I've said so far and you don't think you're gonna like anything else I say, then stop listening to me and do this right now. Drop this into SEO mods right now. I know you guys probably all have memberships. I mean, you know, it's friendly territory. So do this right now. And then, go in, and then this is the thing that you can go into a company with and say, you're not even writing content that connects with your audience. You should look at how well you blanket the industry. So take all the keywords in like a tool like Uber Suggest, which I'm showing here, drop them all into Aaron Wall's tool to check rankings or your SEO mods tool, and then see how many of these come up blank. Do you see there's only one? that's blank here, I like that. So what I've done is I've taken the top most search for keywords associated with the, with the head keyword, dropped them all in, and then seen, do they, how, do they even have content that remotely matches with what people are searching for? That's a pretty good freaking saturation, right? Go to Uber Suggest, put in your head keyword that you've been trying for for so long, get all the different derivatives, drop it into some kind of a ranking tool and see how many come back as zero. That's one of the ways you can get your clients to do RCS. RCS gets copied. 
So I can't mention the name of this company because they are, they are in this neck of the woods. But John Henry, a guy that we work with, um, we built a content piece for a client, uh, for a coupon, for coupon site, coupon client. And because we're trying to move them to RCS, we said we're gonna keep and aggregate all the military discounts on the web. We ended up with like a couple hundred. And what we ended up doing is we put them all in a long blog post. And it's interesting. There is a company in this area who copied it because it was quality content. That's what happens with quality content. It gets copied and you don't even know about it. And we called them and said, you copied our stuff. And we got a call back from their lawyer. So see, I still answer the phone at Sears sometimes. And when I see somebody, somebody, and somebody, I like, get ready to crap my pants, right? I'm like, oh no. What did I say at MozCon? Shit. And the guy said, and it was a guy, he says, I got a call from somebody there that says we copied content from this very large company that all of us use when we typically are getting ready to buy a house. And, um, and, and he said, somebody there said I copied whatever. And it's like, okay, cool. So we showed him the proof and he said, oh my God. He said, we're sorry. I said, well, just give us credit. And he goes, uh, I looked into this and there's, other, there's four other copies where we also copied this content. Is it okay if I put credit on those four other sites that we all do real company shit on to your site? I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so set up, so whenever you push out real content, not your article you pay 20 bucks for, when you put out real content, immediately set up a snippet in Google Alerts for just a snippet of it. And you will find every mofo that's copying your stuff. And you're gonna find that when you do RCS, other real companies copy your content. So, people give me a lot of credit for coming up with content ideas, and I wanna walk you guys exactly through how I do it, and I gotta start speeding. So I'm gonna give you another 30 second guide to how I develop content ideas. I gotta skip through, sorry. So what I do is I take a keyword like military discount, right? And then I stop. I've been preaching this for freaking years, guys. Stop hitting enter on Google. Just watch what comes back. It will expand your mind in all kinds of new places. My favorite example is, type in, how can I get my girlfriend? <laughs> and then type in, how can I get my boyfriend? And you will understand exactly why men and women have the hard, most hard time getting along. <laughs> when you type that in to suggest, I built a business off of this, by the way, for one of our clients. When you type that in to suggest, men are looking for how to get you guys to like pretzel up in weird positions and uh, lose weight. I'm not making that shit up. Don't hit enter. And women want to know how they can get him back or to propose. Some things never freaking change. But I'm happily married, so what's up? All right. So what I do is I take the, key, the core keyword and I put the letter A after it. I'm not even looking for what comes after it. What I'm looking for is do I see 10 results? Do I see a lot of different things that people search for with that letter A? And when I see it, my nose goes, you're on the scent. People are looking for all different derivatives of this word, which tells me all the different content that I need to build. But then I do something crazy and I put in the letter X. And then when that gets filled up with 10 results, I go, I'm on to something. Because there's not a lot of words that begin with X, right? Look at them. And then I do Z just to be safe. And when I see 10, 10 show up, I know I'm on to something and that's how I usually start to build my content. So people give me all like, Will, how do you come up with this stuff? I just don't hit enter on Google. It's really not that advanced. I don't even need to put that in a freaking bit.ly or anything or no tool for you to put it into. When you get ready to hit enter, just go, mm, no, and you'll just see things that people are searching for. <laughs> it's simple. I built an entire microsite off this strategy and earned a client 30 grand off of not hitting enter on something that I just showed you guys a little bit ago. Do it in Quora. How does Shazam? I don't even know. I don't even know why I was looking for this. Maybe I was looking for like something about Shaq when he was Shazam. I don't remember how I got on this, but I did. But this is now showing me all the questions people are going to Quora and asking Quora, asking people on Quora. So why wouldn't I not write the content around this, right? That's how you get a link from freaking a, a high quality tech publication. Damn it, I'm running out of time. All right, I'm gonna keep going. So what's interesting is, um, you see the blue line? How much should I save? This is another example. I just type questions into Google. How much should I? And I just hit space. And then that starts to get me thinking about different things that people are looking for. What's interesting is how much the trajectory is going up. And I think it's got something to do with the fact that Ask Jeeves went out of business and people started realizing they couldn't ask questions to ask anymore around 2006. Because remember, that was what their model was. The results are going to be shit, but you can put the word what in front of it. 
how much should I save? If you're in the financial services industry and you're trying to write content right now, do this. Do this. How much should I save? And then here's the content plan. Done. It's not super advanced. And those things will drive things that the people in the boardroom who control the budgets care about. When's the last time you heard about link building on a quarterly call for a company? Get as close to the revenue as possible, guys, because our link ideas and content ideas are driving revenue. And I want to speed through this so I can give you an example. Oh, Kaiser the Sage. I can't pronounce his last name. How do you pronounce Jason's last name? Are you serious? That's some dirty shit, y'all. This guy's awesome. You guys know him. But he talks a lot about um, how to get links off of the content that you built and how to present that, and I think it's awesome. So follow him. So we did a giveaway for a client. It generated $3,900 in revenue for the giveaway. So we asked them to give away product. They gave it away, and we gained $3,900. Screw where they ranked. I just made them $3,900 in a week, right? They got social shares, which they loved. You should have seen the email that went out internally. Oh my God, Sear killed it. We got $3,900 in revenue. We got all this engagement. We added 10 new customers that have a lifetime value of X, and we added a relationship with a new blogger. None of this was about linking. None of this was about rankings going up, and they loved us. This went to a company who the CEO of the company is the 171 richest man in the world. He sees this, and that Sear did this. He ain't asking about freaking link juice. He's asking about revenue for his pet project, and he likes it. And he's got a lot of friends who do real company stuff, right? So we made a client $3,900 giving away something. You know what, it took us four months to get them to give it away. And then once they did, guess what happened after the numbers came back in? They go, can we do this again next week? That's the beauty of RCS. That's the beauty. They go, oh my God, give me some more of the stuff. And we go, we got your stuff. <laughs> All right, so let's keep rocking because I'm really low on time. Oh my God, okay, you guys have to do this. Anybody here in the software business? Software business people, do this. Type in the name of your software name, hit space, and hit versus, and then don't hit enter. And then you see everything people are trying to compare you to. These people are deep in the freaking funnel, yo. They are ready to convert. They're down to two options. See what happens. Do it now. Stop listening to me. This will help you do stuff. You do it for SEO mods. Here it is. Sorry, I just created some more work for somebody. No. I'm not your boss. Take that shit up with Rand. Because this is what people are searching for, right? And one of the top words is SEO mods versus SEO book. Who's going to own that conversation? Well, let's find out. Quora? And then I clicked on Quora, and nobody from SEO mods answered this question, so I'm safe there. Um, there's an SEO Moz interview of SEO book. Well, that's not comparing the two, right? There's no paid search ads here. This is one way you can kill your clients. We've been loving doing this, man. It's freaking awesome for our software clients. It's just nasty, dirty. Because <laughs> the people are deep in the funnel. So that's the beauty. I'm comparing two products now. I'm no longer going, I'm looking for an architectural software. I'm going, am I looking for this or that? The question is, do you have the content? So as I keep going, oh my God, this sucks. Okay, 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 okay. So I, I gotta tell you this, because I'm, I'm sad about this. I have a client in the skateboarding space, and one of our guys named Nico, he came up with this idea. Um, yes, my whole presentation is basically curated off of my team's ideas. I'm representing a lot of their stuff, so I gotta give him shout outs. Um, he did a site colon .gov and the word skate parks. Holy shit, who knew that skate parks are so often sponsored by government, like the government, the local city builds them, and they're on .govs. So we said to our client, let's go get us some .govs, but don't do it the way we typically do it. Hey, can I pay you $25 and get a link on your homepage? Uh -uh. What you want to do is you want to do things that actually add value. Interview the people that built the skate parks. Create a Google map of all the different skate parks. How about the most friendly cities for skate parks, right? Hey, did you know we listed you as the most friendly skate park in? That's how you're going to get your links and do some RCS. So I got to keep rocking. There's going to be turbulence when you do this. This guy almost sued one of my clients. It is not a lie, because I got the cease and desist. So let me tell you what I did. When you guys start trying to do RCS, it's going to be tough. You're going to make mistakes, and it's about what you learn from those mistakes. 
And I learned a big one here. So try to trick your friends because you can always pick up the bat phone and go, my bad dude, don't, 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 right? But don't tell them it was you. I didn't ask Rand to link. I didn't ask anybody at SEO Moz to link. What I did is I, looked, I took a lot of posts from SEO Moz and I curated them into a book and I made a book and I sent in like a caseload of them to Rand. But I didn't tell him it was me. I did it for my client. And uh, I said, look at what we've done. We've, we've created these books for you. Already done all the hard work. We hired graphic designers to do all the stuff. And he was like, Will, I didn't know that was you, dude. He's like, uh, tell the client not to worry about that C&D that we sent out. Mm, darn it. But that's OK, I think. My client knew that I was trying to do something that was valuable. I tried to connect them to a community that is this big. And I failed. But that's OK. They're still a client. They still like us. They knew we were trying to do RCS, and they know there's going to be turbulence on the way. But there's going to be huge wins, too. Guys, this made me smile so wide. There's a brand that every one of us has used here before we were probably about 12. Oh, I know I'm running out of time. Shit. I know. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm going to hurry up. So they said this to me in a call, and it was like the best thing I ever heard, man. As an SEO guy, this is the best thing I ever heard. They said, I got 25 content writers. I'm going to tell them to stop writing. You guys go do the keyword research and tell me what my audience is seeking, and then we'll tell those people what to write. Somebody just said, oh my god, who said that? <laughs> this is one of the biggest brands out there, right, for kids. I was so pumped, because that's what I've been wanting to do my whole life. So SEOs, we are the people who can drive content strategy if we understand our role in a larger context and stop talking about link juice. Stop this shit. Stop it. I'll write you a 500-word article for 20 bucks. You really think that's going to be shared or get any links? So you know what? We're the ugly fish of marketing. And embrace it. We're the people sucking the crap at the bottom of the tank. And these are the pretty marketers. I need the right pH and someone to feed me. We're like, we eat shit and survive. You motherfuckers die, right? So we survive because we know how to do more with less. And they need $20,000 budgets, and they need to do billboards to get the results that we can get, but we got to step our game up so we can get their budgets and send them PR and advertising and billboard people home. But we got to stop making our work about links and shortcuts. Stop that. Get Rand to send your client a C&D. That's a win, because that means you're trying to do some real company shit. Nobody got a C&D for doing a do-follow link, did you? CEOs think our do-follow crap is boring. I want to start making our conversations about industry leadership for our client. I want to talk about caring for their customers. I want to have people being sarcastic about getting two suits from Revzilla, right? I want to make our work about engagement, education, things that matter to the people that think do-follow links and directory links are boring, because they are, guys. And then you get your clients to say things like that. And we can win the budgets that we deserve, guys. I know we can. And your first attempts are going to suck. They're going to suck. But RCS has to start somewhere. And I figured it'd be, I have to always give Rand the business at every time I do a presentation here. So let's start. This is the intro slide for a Whiteboard Friday on YouTube. Woo. Look at this mother effer here. <laughs> Like, he's got to hold the whiteboard up because he can't affix it to the wall? Like, <laughs> tax aren't that expensive. Look at this, like, Don Corleone, like, dark in the basement. Like, I'm going to kill you if you don't give me link juice guy. Like, the board is, like, tilted against the wall on a chair. <laughs> but now look at Roger's ass. Dude looks like this and shakes people's hands. That shit's crazy. Look at this guy. Oh, his board is like stuck on the wall now, moving on up. That's a little shout out to Sherman Hemsley. He died. Love you, dude. And now look at this. But it started with that Don Corleone mofo in a basement with a freaking whiteboard that was sitting on a chair. And now it's all you guys coming from all over the world to be here. That, my friends, is real company shit. And 
No, no, stop clapping. We have to do Q&A in 21 seconds. Stop clapping. All right, if anybody's got a question I can take real quick, I will. I'll share with you guys anything that I can uh, if you have questions. So, anybody got one? <laughs> it's the truth. I think when you love an industry, it's easy to not want to see it go to crap. Anybody? Uh -oh. Yeah, I know, it's different than usual. Uh -huh. Rand has a question. Dish, what's up? <laughs> All right, so one of the, we, we would never have sued them, all right? The CMDs. Dude, that was on me, that's my fault. <laughs> uh, RCS, it's, it's totally awesome, but one of the, what I find that one of the worst problems with it, and I see this all the time, is that there's no way to attribute it. I don't care how multi-channel amazing you are, if you do RCS and you build relationships, those relationships will, will turn into value a month from now, six months from now, two years from now, five years from now, there's no way that you can say it was worth it at, at the point of entry. So how, and yet, and yet, somehow, the advertising business, right? You go, you go to Don Draper and that guy's like, my ad gets credit forever. Mm -hmm. For forever, the way we position it, the way we branded it. How, how do we do that? How do we get the RCS we do to get the same respect from lifetime attribution that, that they get with brand advertising? Ooh, okay, it's a little bit over my head because I'm not a brand guy. I'm, I'm a dirty SEO guy. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the sucker at the bottom of the... the but you know that tent. link that you got is worth way more than yes. the so, revenue it brought next but, week. So you know what? I, I think you work with companies who, who have been investing in Don Draper forever, who just goes, trust me, this is gonna work. And we actually have some numbers behind what we're doing. So they're so used to just pissing in the wind and just going, we hope this works, that you already know that mentality's there. So for us to come in and go, 20,000 people searched for this last month, and if we get you in the top spot and we can start doing blah, 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 they go, wait, you have numbers with this? Awesome. So we have found it's easy if you have a client who doesn't think about SEO for every single thing. It's when they go, what's the value of that link you got me? I start going, time for me to get a new client, right? Because it's like, I can't give you the value of one link but I think companies who are comfortable actually doing RCS before search engines even existed, they understand this phenomenon, right? But the companies who don't understand it, I can't do nothing for them. I, that's what I'm looking for right now, to be honest. We are really going through a, um, a serious thing where we're trying to shift some of our older clients who we built the company on, who I love, but they never wanted to invest in RCS. We kept telling them, this is the way, this is the way. And then eventually when bad things happen, they go, oh my God, you know, and we're like, we've been telling you this for four years and you don't want to make the investment, so it's time for us to, to wash our hands. I mean, that's how we've been dealing with it, to be honest. So when you work with a large brand, they're used to spending that kind of money. Yeah. And they understand it, so we look like gods when we come in sometimes because we're actually willing to be somewhat accountable. And that one example I showed, it wasn't the Gap, but it's one of their competitors, we earned $3,900 on our link building strategy in a week. That's also how you say, now if you can get me 10 of these, I might be able to earn your 39,000, and those numbers always end up in the quarterly reports. All right. Hey, are we, uh, did you see Twitter, I'm, Will? Are we on for our, we're, we're gonna go head to head next time. We? we? Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. I'll do it. Just you're just you're too good. I'll too do good. it. Bring it. I'll trip you down a flight of stairs if I have to. I might be able to answer your question to a certain degree since I'm not an SEO person in any way. Okay. And in, in my experience, since I've been working at the company that I work with, um, we're a manufacturer. We're in the middle of a cornfield in the middle of Iowa. And essentially we have to do this work every day to attract attention to us because we're in a tiny little niche in a marketplace. Mm -hmm. So my bottom line answer is it, every aspect of the business has to be divvied up into very specific and discrete vertical markets. And each market has to be dug into until you understand not only the vertical market, but the sub-markets. And that's very difficult for me because I have to hire people to help me do this mm -hmm. because I can't do it all myself. But what I've found is that if I don't concentrate on each vertical, sub-vertical, the words, the phrases, the Google AdWords, the, the, the content, if I don't do that, nobody can do it. 
So what you have to do is draw that information out. I mean, what you guys need to do is draw that information out from whoever it is that you think you're going to be getting to hire you. You have to figure out how to draw that information out of the people who work within the business. Yes. Because you have to speak the language in a way that's unfamiliar to them. For, for the work that we do in the cornfields in Iowa, nobody really speaks our language but farmers and manufacturers and people who bend steel. <laughs> So you have to be very, very specific and use the language. And, and that's what I found. And we have a lot of, I, I feel like we have a lot of good information for those who are looking for what it is that we're after. Well, I mean, to me, what you're, you know, I think sometimes what SEOs do is we go out and we look for PR6s and we look for PR5s and domain authority X instead of saying who out there is talking the way we talk who is interested in what we want to talk about or what we have to talk about. And wherever the chips fall, the chips fall. Um, so I think that's something that we should all be doing, is just trying to find people who naturally talk about what we talk about instead of starting off with some kind of blanket metric and then saying, well, this site's not worth it because they don't hit it. Just find the people that care about what you care about, and I find it goes a really long way. Thank you for that. Thanks for sharing that. Uh-oh. I, I don't know how much trouble. It's your show, dude, so you tell me. When just We got one more, I think. Maybe two. Hey, Will. Congratulations yep. on the baby. Baby? I had a baby? I don't know. That's what I thought they said. You no, know. that's my dog, Coltrane. I would never call my baby Coltrane unless it was like really <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I'm a marketer. I don't read. I just... Um, so, you know, you spoke about something kind of interesting with regard to the infographics. Do you have any suggestions on how you know, we might try to get the client to share more data and what direction you might want to push them in initially and where you might want to put that data on the site. Like, um, a, a home buying site, Trulia, okay. does it really well. They put a lot of data and mm -hmm. kind of make it very interactive. So if you could speak to that a little bit, I would appreciate it. Oh, that's really easy. So um, I, I, um, we run queries at SEER. Um, are things like increase or decrease and charts and percentage and then like a client's keyword and then I'll do like doc type PDF and what I'm looking for are studies. I'm running queries where somebody's already done all the data, then I slap my Mozbar search overlay and then I can see all the links that those things got and I look for these really long industry reports that get hundreds of links and I go, nobody wants to read all that. But if that thing got 100 links on its own and it's 25 pages and 5,000 words, then let me use someone else's public data source, turn it into something that's quicker and easier to digest, and contact all 116 of the people that already linked to it and said, hey, here's something that's like almost like an executive summary for you to include. So it'll sit on top of the, the, the piece that you wrote that already links to this big report. Wouldn't it be great for your users if before they click to this PDF that's got hundreds and hundreds of pages, and it's going to take forever for someone to read, that they could get a quick synopsis with this. And they go, that would be great. And I go, blink. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I got to go, right? Thank you so much, guys. I'll be around later. Thank you. Thank you.